16th chapter, the 6th through the 9th verse, it says, He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the, the keeper of the vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. He said three words. He said, cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said unto him, sir, this is the, the gardener. He said, sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, meaning if it bears fruit, let it alone. But if not, after that, you can cut it down. Today's title of this message is, Give Me One More Chance. Somebody say it. Say, give me one more, one more chance. Father, in Jesus' name, bless this word today, God. I decrease and you increase. Speak through me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody, as you're sitting down, say, give me one more, one more chance. You may be seated. In this life, I'm coming to understand that second chance opportunities don't always come around, especially in certain relationships. For some people, you get one chance to do me wrong, and if you do me wrong, I'm cutting you off. I don't know if that's anybody in here today. With certain people, you get one time to cut me off or to do something, and I'm cutting you off. With certain tests, it's a pass or fail. You don't get to ask the professor for a redo. The very life that we live, we get one shot at it. We are born. We have relationships with people. We live. We love. And we pray that we made an impact in someone's life while we're here. But in full, you only get one chance at life. But Jesus, somebody say, but Jesus, Jesus is the ultimate cheat code. The cheat code or a cheat code in a game is a special password that gives a player a special ability to do something unusual. When life gives us one chance with Jesus, we now have a right to live again. Jesus is the ultimate second chance giver. When Adam got it wrong, and brought sin into the world, here comes Jesus. Somebody say, here comes Jesus. He gave his life and gave a second chance to mankind. Author Nishan Panwar says, not everyone gets a second chance. If you do get one, take advantage of it because it's a gift and it may be something better than you had before. My question to you today, somebody say his question to you, I'm going to ask you to talk to your neighbor. I'm sorry. His question to you, my question to you is, as we are in the start of this new year, we are in the first month, January 2024, as we are in the start of this new year, and since this is the year of growth, what are you going to do with the chance that you've been given? If you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've been given another chance. If you're breathing in and out right now, I dare you take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. You've been given another chance. Somebody say, I got another chance. And with that chance, somebody say, with that chance, I'm asking you to speak back to me because I need you to talk back to me today. I got my suit on. I feel, feel churchy today. He expects you to use those breaths to give and not just take. He expects you to use the breath in your body to show his power and his glory in this earth. My question is with this chance that God has given you, are you producing fruit or are you barren? If God were to inspect the tree of your life, would he find you to be fruitful or would he find nothing to show of your life? Oh my gosh. And this is the tension that we see today. That God, the ultimate life giver, has given each of us a life. But his requirement, somebody say his requirement, is that we be fruitful with the life that he has given us. 
We cannot use excuses on why we didn't produce with the life that he gave us. We can't use excuses that our family didn't have enough or I didn't grow up with a silver spoon or or my family was poor or I experienced something. We can't use that excuse because God expects for us to grow. If things are good, he expects for us to grow because of it. And even if things are bad, he expects for us to grow in spite of it. Oh, my gosh. If things have been going good in your life, he expects for you. I'm going to say it again for you to grow because of it. But if you have some situations, some things that have happened to you, he says, I expect you to grow in spite of it. But you have to grow. You cannot stop. You have to grow. And this is the year. That I've made up in my mind that I'm not going to be stagnant. This is the year that I made up in my mind for God I will live and for God I'll die. This is the year that I've given God my full 100% because when God blesses you, you can grow from it. But if life stresses you, you got to grow through it. Oh my gosh. But you've got, somebody say, I've got to grow. Got to grow. God requires that we grow. And since we've been given life, it is our responsibility to be fruitful and grow. It's your responsibility because God has given you life, because you are breathing, because you have the ability to walk. It's your responsibility to be fruitful and to grow. So we see um, uh, there's a story of a rose. And when I looked online for for this, I saw it was like Tupac Shakur had did like a poem of a rose that grew out of concrete. Well, the story says that that um, this rose was 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 crowded or got invaded by construction and they poured cement around the rose. Yet when they went back to look sometime later, the rose had grown through the concrete. Here's the significance, that even though the conditions were unlikely for the rose, the rose didn't let anything stop it from growing. The rose grew up in spite of the conditions surrounding it. Oh, my gosh. Hear me. Life is going to have challenges. But God has placed too much. Somebody say too much. Too much promise. He's placed too much power in you not to grow in spite of the challenges that you may face. What I'm here to tell you is that life is going to life sometimes. And you may have some challenges that you face, but that's not an excuse not to grow. God requires us to grow. So let's look at this this text. In verse 6, we see that a certain man, he had a fig tree. And in this text, we actually see that there are actually Two men that are mentioned in this parable, the owner of the vineyard and the vineyard keeper, who was probably an employee of the owner of the vineyard. The Bible says for three years, the owner has come up and down his vineyard, looking forward to tasting a tasty fig, but he didn't find it. He 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 was looking for fruit, but he didn't find it. However, For three years, what he found were leaves, but no fruit. When doing further study, the tree was a parallel with God's chosen people, Israel. And in this time, when Jesus was telling this parable, and a parable is simply a story that Jesus would tell so people would be able to get revelation, the Israelites were very religious, but had no relationship. The Israelites had leaves, but they didn't have fruit. They looked apart. Yeah. They, they came to church. Yeah. They knew how to smile and how to say, God bless you. And they knew how to dress up in a suit and look holy, but they had leaves, but no fruit. Oh, my gosh. They had leaves, but no fruit. They knew how to smile. They knew how to say, God bless you. And I wrote this and I want to say it. But they were the main ones. If someone uh, cut them off in the parking lot, they were saying another B word. And it wasn't God bless you. They had leaves. Come on, somebody. But no fruit. These church people, they knew church. But they wouldn't forgive. They, they knew the right thing to say and the right things to do when people were looking, but they really didn't know God. They had leaves, but they didn't have fruit. How sad is it to have leaves, but no fruit? 
How sad is it to be saved and be going to church for years and have leaves but have no fruit? You've been saved and you don't still and you still don't have the fruit of the spirit. You don't have love, you still hating on people. You don't have joy every time I call you, you depressed. You don't have peace, you still fight at a drop of a dime. <laughs> you don't have patience, you can't give anybody the benefit of the doubt. You ready to always go off. You don't have kindness, you mean, you mean and surly. You don't have generosity, you stingy and you still won't give even when God tells you to. You don't have faithfulness, you're out at the first sign of discomfort. You don't have gentleness, you're cold and nobody wants to be around you. You don't even have self-control because at the first temptation you're like, take me now, Cletus. You don't have self-control. We have leaves you but no fruit and the owner after three years of going down this vineyard after three years of looking for fruit he was tired he was tired of it and he said you know what cut the tree down but Jesus we back there somebody say but Jesus who represents the gardener Jesus, our chief intercessor, begs the landowner to give the tree another chance. But here's the question. Once again, ask somebody, what's the question? What's the question? Here's the question. If the vineyard owner is going to give this tree another chance, if God is going to give us another chance, what are we doing with it? What are we going to do with our fresh year. We got, we got a new year, 2024, over 300 days left in this year. If he has given us another chance, this is where we go. The first thing I saw in this text was we have to do three things. One thing we have to do is we have to let the gardener fix it. Somebody say fix it. Let him fix it. The Bible says in verse eight, but he answered and said to him, sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. So this time around, everybody say this time around, it's a new year. He asked for us to get a year. He said, please don't cut it down. Give me a year. He's given us a year. He's, this, is, this is the year, y'all. He's given us a year. And what I'm saying is this year, I'm going to let the gardener, I'm going to let Jesus, I'm going to let him fix it. I'm going to let him fix some things in my life. If I want to be fruitful, I've tried too long on my own. I've tried too long to give up that habit. I've tried too long to do it by myself. I have to let Jesus handle it. I've got to let him fix it. I have tried too long and I can't do it anymore. I got to let God fix it. Somebody say, let God fix it. So the gardener says, let me fix it by digging around the tree. So digging is an agricultural term. This word means to remove weeds, debris, mm -hmm, rocks, and obstacles, like y'all today, from the plant's roots that takes away the nutrients from the tree. Before a tree can be fruitful, the gardener has to remove some things that keep the tree from being fruitful. Oh, my gosh. Those things that he has to remove are called weeds. Weeds are plants that grow where you don't want it to grow. Mm -hmm. Weeds compete with plants for nutrients and water and light. Weeds kill a plant because they take and they don't give. Oh, man. I remember on Saturday mornings, my dad used to make me and my brother go out into the yard and go into his flower bed, and he used to make us pick weeds. I would wonder why he had to why we had to spend so much time picking these little plants that looked normal out of the flower bed. But what I came to realize is while weeds may look normal, they don't belong. While weeds may look like they belong, 
even in your life, weeds that have been causing you to be unproductive, weeds of unhealthy relationships, weeds of generational dysfunctions, weeds of memories of what people said about you in the past. You even have to have people in your life that can identify what weeds look like. I remember we started picking up some of his plants and he came out like, what are you doing? What are you? We ha- he had to identify the difference between a weed sometimes and a plant because a weed can pretend like it's for you. A weed can pretend like it's there giving you nutrients, but all the while the weed is just taking and not giving. You have to recognize what are your weeds. You have to recognize who are your weeds. What's been holding me back from being everything God desires me to be? What are my weeds? Maybe the reason you haven't been fruitful It's because in the soil of your heart, you're still dealing with the weeds of your past. And the gardener, this point, he's simply saying, let me fix it. Let me fix it. It's time for you to let it go. Let go of that hurt. Let go of what they said about you. You've got to let the gardener dig. You've got to let him dig some things out. You've got to let him remove certain things that's been holding you back. And you, you've been wondering why you haven't been able to grow. It's because you're letting things hold you down. You've got to let him fix it. You're not going to be able to fix it. But you have to let the gardener fix it. Let Jesus fix it. And since he pleaded on our behalf for another chance, this year, the year of growth, not only do I have to let God fix it or let the gardener fix it, and, but I also, I have to let the gardener fertilize it. Somebody say fertilize it. What I saw in the text, y'all, this text was meaty. It says in verse 8, and he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it. But then in the, the King James Version, or the New, King James, New mm-hmm, King James Version, it said, and dung it. So all my country boys and country girls, y'all know what dung is, right? All y'all who grew up in Suffolk and, you know, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what dung is. Dung is fecal matter. For all my city people, dung is bowel movement. Dung is feces. Dung is waste. Woo. Dung stinks. Dung is an agricultural word, another one, for fertilizer. And they use this stinky dung to make things grow. The gardener has to add some stuff. The gardener has to add some stuff It doesn't smell too good. The gardener has to add some stuff that doesn't look too good sometimes. The gardener has to add this stuff, but guess what? It's for the trees good. Jesus sometimes has to allow some stuff that doesn't feel good, but it works for your good. Oh, my gosh. He has to add some things, like you said, that don't smell good, but it's working for your good good. The gardener had to add dung to the tree so the tree could grow. I'm here to tell you, just because you are experiencing some bad times, just because you are experiencing some smelly situations, just because you're experiencing some things that don't feel too good, it's just the gardener using that to make you grow. It's the gardener using that to make you grow. Jesus will use the good, he will use the bad, and he will use the ugly for his glory. Jesus will use even your bad days for his glory. Jesus will use the sunshine and the rain for his glory. So don't despise when you're going through seasons that don't feel good. Let me suggest that the seasons that don't feel good oftentimes grow us more than the seasons that do feel good. Oftentimes the seasons that don't feel right and when we're going through, it puts us on our knees and it makes us worship. It makes us get in the presence of God and God will use those smelly seasons in order to get you to where he wants you to be. Don't despise. Somebody say, I won't despise my smelly season. 
because God is going to use it for his his glory. You're going to look back and you're going to say, wow, look how my faith has grown. You're going to look back and you're going to say, wow, look at how patient I am now. You're going to look back and you're going to say, wow, look at how much self-control I have now because I'm growing fruit and fruit isn't just grown in the sunshine. Fruit is even grown in the rain. So we have to embrace when the gardener is using fertilizer to fix it because that's where our true growth will be. So because God has given me another chance, I'm going to submit to the gardener. I'm going to number one, I'm going to point one, I'm going to let him fix it. And then I'm going to let him, him fertilize it. He's got to use the bad situations and the situations that don't feel good. And then lastly, if he's given me another chance, I'm going to, last point, I'm going to find it. This year, this year, somebody say this year, I'm going to find that I now bear fruit. Verse 9 says, and if it bears fruit, well, meaning don't cut it down. But if not, after that, you can cut it down. This is the year that you're going to produce. This is the year that God is going to see that you are fruitful. This, somebody say, this is my year. This is my year that I'm going to grow. Somebody say that I'm going to grow. And I'm here to encourage you that this is the year that you grow and you produce. You will grow in the spirit and produce. You will grow in your relationships and produce. You will grow in your gifts and produce. This is the year to grow. This is the year to be fruitful. John 15 and 5. It says, I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I am him, he bears much fruit. So that's telling me as long as I abide in the will of the Lord, as long as I stay connected to Jesus, I'm going to bear much fruit. I'm going to bear much fruit as long as I put my life in the life or in the hands of the Lord. I have to stay connected to the source. When the enemy tries to disconnect me from the source, When the enemy says you don't need church no more, you don't need to do that anymore, you don't need godly friends, he's trying to disconnect me from the source. And I'm saying I'm not going to be disconnected this year, but I'm going to walk and be everything that God has called me to be. I won't let the enemy disconnect me this year. I won't give up after February or March. I'm still going to be in it. Some of us, I said we've been in the gym, and by now we're probably already out the gym. I'm not going to to stop. I'm going to go for what God has for me, but I will stay connected and I'm going to bear much fruit. I will be obedient and be faithful. I will stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I'm going to grow because God has commanded me to grow. I'm going to grow much fruit. Somebody say, I'm going to grow much fruit. I'm going to grow in love this year. Yes, Lord. I'm going to grow in joy this year. I'm going to grow in peace this year. I'm going to grow in patience this year. I'm going to grow in kindness. I'm going to grow in goodness. I'm going to grow in faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control because this is my year to grow. This is the year that I'm telling everything that's been trying to hold me back that I'm growing in spite of. This is the year where I'm giving giving God my everything. I don't know about any other year, but this is the year that I told God, God, I'm giving you my 100%. This is the year that I said, if it don't work this year, I don't know what can happen because God, I'm praying, God, I'm fasting, and I'm going to give you this year because you gave me another chance. Is anybody thankful that you have another chance, another chance to get it right, another chance to say, God, use me, another chance to be used for his glory, Because this is the year that I grow. Somebody say, this is the year that I grow. All stand, stand on your feet. And if I'm going to grow this year, I have to tell myself, if it doesn't grow, it has to go. This is the year that you got to make up in your mind that if it doesn't grow, it's got to go. Because anything that is holding you down, 
anything that is taking life from you being able to be who God has called you to be. That's not what you need this year. You've got too much responsibility this year. You've got too many things that God wants you to do this year. And what I, I'm not saying that you, you go as a hermit crab and that no one is going to hear from you. What I'm saying is you have to inspect fruit. You have to inspect the fruit of even those who are around you. As you are expecting, expecting your own fruit, you need to inspect the fruit of your circles. And we've been, we've been teaching that a lot. And I don't know what it's about, but you've got to inspect the fruit even of your circles. And you have to inspect your own fruit. And you need to ask the Lord, God, this year, I want to grow. And I want to be able to produce fruit. Number one, the fruit of the Spirit. And if the, last year, I had no, no faithfulness. If last year, I, I had no peace. If last year, I had no patience. If last year, I was mean to everybody. I had no kindness. I got to see fruit this year, y'all. I need to see fruit. And not only do that you need to see fruit, God needs to see fruit.